Hello everyone, welcome back to the seminar. Uh, in the second video, I, in, I will be showing more in depth um, the examples uh, that I presented last week and a quick introduction to Grasshopper and show the components that we use and how would you model these structures. To, the, to do this, we made a set of four files which you can download in model and you can follow while watching this video. We will start showing the example of the telescopy systems. So if you open the file, you will find this definition in Grasshopper and a set of uh, telescopic elements on the top and this triangle on the bottom. So these files, this file is organized so that you can change the parameter, change this slider and then the geometry will change as well. You can change for example the length, the total length of the element, radius, the thickness you see in detail when we change the, the slider the component changes as well that means not only this pipe but also the other one that is holding the telescopy system and last one the move slider where we can control the telescopy system so here we, we have three uh, examples. I'm going to show just the first one because the other uh, two are the same. So we start uh, this model first uh, locating a point, a point where we start to model. And then we easily move the point. So if we click here, we can see we uh, preview the components, we can see that uh, we just move the point, the point in a X uh, vector, then we draw a line and we control the, um, the division of this line in two just to divide the line into elements and then we can create the geometry. The geometry here is a 3D model with, with cluster so in Grasshopper you can uh, put uh, many components into one cluster. The cluster is just if you just uh, double click you will get uh, the further definition and these are just the components that um, the, the sliders that we uh, saw before so here we are just uh, taking uh, this information for example uh, the point where it's located uh, to create the circle but the point is in a uh, x set uh, plane so we just take the point the initial point and then we put uh, this component plane and then we create a circle. The circle has a radius. The radius is in the main slider. And then we just create a movement for this plane. And then we create the next circle. So if you see that here, this movement is um, or is, uh, this slider that just, just move the the bottom part of the pipe just to, to create a thickness on the bottom. So then we just uh, extrude the elements and then we have this component which is uh, cap holes. Cap holes is uh, very handy to just close the components. Yeah. Then we close both of the components and then we just make a boolean difference. So the result is just this pipe which has a 
a close um, uh, button then we can uh, discard the changes and just close that I can I could say but I didn't make any change and then uh, we just uh, uh, can use the, the same logic to create a new pipe so it's just taking this uh, cluster is the same as the other one but taking uh, as a reference this other point that we took so we just um, merge them this component this merge is only uh, taking this component and this other component and put it together in a, into a list it's the geometry and then we color the geometry so that will be a basic explanation how to just model a pipe and you can change the parameters just to change your 3D model. Well, now let's say that you want to do the same, but with uh, with your own uh, Rhino components or your own Rhino geometry. So we can draw a line in Rhino, and we can reference this curve here. I just copy the same. That is the same components that are here in the cluster. We can just copy all of these and discard and now place them here. So I just reference a new line. And now what I did was to create a vector. A vector is following this line. And then I can create a plane, a perpendicular plane with this. Uh, plane normal and I just put here just to see the name of the components so we can create a, a plane normal and with this plane normal I can draw a circle you can see green circle here taking the same radius time that I have here, yeah, and then I can extrude that following the same vector, of course. So I put this amplitude, amplitude component. What it does is takes a vector and gave an amplitude that I have here in this length. Okay. So now I can extrude that guy and cap the holes did the same for the other guy so I take this curve again with these endpoints I get the start point so actually this one is the same guy as here so. and then I move that just a little bit just to create a base with the same uh, logic, so I move the plane just one unit and then create a circle inside. Just the, the radius is, is, is uh, smaller, so I connect it here with this thickness as well. Create a circle and then extrude that circle with the same logic. So. Uh, again, uh, connect it to this amplitude, extrude, cap the holes, and solid difference. So, after words, I can just bake the component and then I have my solid element here. But yeah, you can repeat that to create the other part of the telescopic system is here so you can just do that again you can put it into the big screen then you can pause the video and follow up the, the spaghettis and then I can show you the last uh, file which is here 
and we can go to the top so now following the same logic I, uh, I have here a triangle that is composed by this uh, telescopic system so all of these individual elements are the same that are here but just uh, copy three times and now you can see that here that we create this sphere this sphere is just a, a rotation rotation element so not uh, that much detail right now this is just uh, to prove a concept and we um, create this uh, movement vectors which is with this the what is doing is just moving uh, the end part end points of this uh, triangle so we see the movement so the other one is here this is a green point and yeah um, we use this uh, component, this orient, just to uh, draw this triangle. And reference this guy. So, these guys on the bottom are just a copy again, three copies of uh, this logic. And then we orient that to create this triangle. The orientation is we are using this component. We can find this component here in transformers, trans transformation, and this Euclidean orientation. To orient something, you need a source and a target. The source is just a vector that is following the line. So in this case, it's an X vector. And the target will be a plane. The, the normal of the up of this plane. And to get that guy, we just created this line. And you can see here. Yeah, so clicking here we can enable or disable what is in Grasshopper. So this curve is created, or this line is created just moving points. Start point and the end points. Yeah, so if you just uh, disable everything and just uh, Follow all of these uh, components. You can see that we have here. There's three points, and then the movement. Yeah, we just move the points, and with this movement, we create our new triangle. Triangle, and then we can generate these planes here. What are the, uh, the target of our orientation? So now we can just orient these guys, the geometries, and put it into the context. So that will be for a quick introduction for this, uh, for the telescopic. Now, um, I can move to the next one. Which will be these scissors. So for the scissors, we created uh, a set of four uh, parts of scissors. You can see uh, that all of these scissors here in the component are uh, controlled by a global scissor slider. So 
but you move that the slider you could transform all of them but then you can individually uh, connect them here so now we are just controlling that one on the top you can always uh, reference that again with this general scissor component and now this uh, 3d model is uh, this parametric model is uh, generated kind of with the same logic so um, we first uh, generate um, a rotation of vectors so we have the first vector which is an x vector and using a um, set vector which will be perpendicular we will rotate that vector and the angle is in degrees so by default is uh, in radians but we can right, right click and choose degrees and then we draw a line this line is, um, is then um, the, um, moved uh, to the center of the of the rhino uh, component is moved to the center of the of our model with this uh, slider so what this slider does is just take a point into our main line which is here, that is our main main line. And now we can control the location of uh, this point, moving this slider. And now we just move the line. This is original line, and based on this point, we move the line here. So that will be the line that we use to model all of the scissors components. To do this, uh, we just uh, mirror that line with a plane. This plane is a X set plane. We create a merge, so we put the two the lines together, and we mirror that again. In this case we use this other plane which is a build plane and to build that plane we need the origin which would be one of the points of these two lines so again we have two lines so we put these endpoints and these endpoints with a list uh, we can get just the endpoints of one of these lines and then we create this plane, this, this plane here. With this plane, which, which will be a vertical plane, because I'm taking uh, the second parameter of the plane with this uh, set vector, I just mirror that. When I mirror, um, when I have my scissor, then I can just continue and create an offset. So for doing the offset, uh, I didn't use the offset that comes with Rhino. In the other hand, I use the this offset component, which is uh, in this Pufferfish plugin. This Pufferfish uh, has a, a lot of uh, geometrical modification and which is interesting is that uh, they have this uh, offset curve which you can click here through both sides by default is like here so we only have one side but it's interesting that we can um, set us through and then we have a an offset and then we can extrude that uh, line this uh, curve here so we 
can extrude that and to do um, that properly I use this logic to divide the curves into two sets one set is extruding that uh, um, negative and the other one is extruding that positive that uh, we don't collide the, zone, the two uh, parts of the uh, scissor so we have the extrusion and then again as this uh, last uh, uh, example we use this uh, uh, cap holes just to generate a solid element and that's done that's the final component what I also create is this uh, co collision uh, component which will turn the geometry red or blue red if it's colliding so if we change that guy right here we will see that it's colliding so it's red so that's the logic for all of them for all of these uh, scissor components but uh, to be more precise this uh, scissor component I create this circle just to show the trajectory so this scissor component is on a it's still a symmetrical scissor but the location of the uh, center point of the middle point of the curve is not this middle point is not in the middle anymore so what I'm doing here is just creating another plane as we did here with this plane you remember now I'm creating a plane which is uh, following this angle which is a uh, which will be here exactly okay so now with this plane we can mirror that and with the same logic we have our geometry so we can bake that geometry and then we have the geometry right now another scissor <coughs> will be that guy same logic as this one but now we don't have a Continue and uh, continuously uh, continue element, but we have a kini here. So that kini is controlled by that um, components here. With this slider, you can modify the length of this uh, first part of the the scissor but also the second one and then you will see with this trajectory which, are, which is here I'm gonna try, yeah, change the color then you can see how this trajectory change so if you want to create a scissor that uh, is moving in a only in this uh, trajectory you can modify this component here but none of them this scissor will follow a perfect circle because when we change that we can see that the circle is changing but the trajectory is now like this. The last one, a bit more complicated. It has a knee again, but now in the two elements. Here we just have that here, and now we can uh, create that one as well. So, same logic we have here yeah 
but now we have that two times one here and the other one here again we create a plane we mirror that uh, part of the scissor and then we have them This uh, collide uh, component, we can see what will be the maximum when, it, when this red is colliding. Okay, the ne next one will be sliding. Sliding is uh, probably one of the more uh, simple uh, issues. This is the files to follow. Here. Where is that? Here. Okay. Let me just the score. So for this slide. Sliding, we can see that the, these um, sliders are controlling the location of these channels, but also the length of our geometry and also slope of this cell and as well as this movement so we are start again defining a point which is the zero zero here and then same logic as before we create a line which is just uh, moving the end, the second point of the line with this uh, slider. When we have that line, we create our channel. This channel here has that geometry. This is just a geometry that we draw down here in right now. So you can use that geometry. Oops. Sorry. But you can also modify this geometry here in Rhino. And then reference the geometry again. Right click. Set curve. And then we have this channel. This profile. We move that because we have two channels using this vector and then we color that. And that will be the base of our sliding system for the sliding element here basically do the same we have the other part of the slider let me go backward and then we can screw that one and for the cell we do the same we can create a curve in Rhino but also here in Grasshopper a curve which is controlled by these parameters of this, this slope yeah this is a control point of that uh, north 
component and then when we have uh, our channel or sorry our slider and our geometry we can just move them move that with this move component move component following a y vector and then it's done turn off all of this and now you see so this basic uh, example so this basic example could be a good starting point and the last one will be this following folding this folding is this very very sim simple folding uh, system which is controlled as well as the scissor with this angle so for that one we created this two planes or these two panels that are repeat here with this slider so we can we have more or less panels and we can change the dimension of the panel because they are just rectangles Again, with this mirror component, we just mirror the first one to mirror a plane or this surface. We need a plane, and this plane is defined here. It's a X Z plane. We can do it like here with construction plane, but also we can just type this with the origin and now we have this here that would be the same actually and this already the origin so now we just create this uh, amplitude with this amplitude we just move the following uh, we take that as a base and then we copy that that's why we have all of these numbers here this is generated with this series so series component Usually start with zero, the steps one, one, two, three, four, five, yeah? and the count. The count is what we control here. Number of repetitions. So we multiply the distance of these two points. That's what I'm what I am doing here. So I take this point and this point. I measure the distance, multiply that uh, for uh, to generate uh, the number of uh, elements we use it as a move vector so we don't have one but we have 10 vectors so when we move that we have all of this and that will be the result so this for examples, you can um, modify, you can ask me questions to have here my email and 
I will try to answer you as soon as possible. But I will do another video with a with a two different uh, example of folding, a bit more complicated. I also suggest you to download this plugin, Crane. With Crane, you can generate uh, origami patterns and you can simulate them in Grasshopper.